anybody love Jesus in this church? Hallelujah. And that song they sing, it said, he's the cup that will never run dry. Come on, somebody. And as I was listening to the words, and I know the, what the Lord's already put in me, and the Lord reminded me that he was the root out of dry ground. He's the root out of dry ground that never runs dry. Come on, somebody. I said God sometimes won't make no sense at all, but when he's done doing it, Caleb, you, he'll understand. Come on, somebody. He is able. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 3 through 9. Listen and take note. I don't know what your Bible is, but I'm reading this one today. Listen and take note. A sower went out to sow, and he sowed some seed fell beside the path, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. So if you ever hear me praying before we preach and I say, Lord, send out the bird hunters, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody know what I'm talking about. The birds came out and devoured it. Some seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil. Father God, hold me in the hollows of your hands. They don't need Pastor Robbins. We need King Jesus. So, Lord, the oh Lord, the King of kings, the great I am, I just thank you, Lord, for anointing me. I thank you, Lord, for choosing me. I thank you, Lord, for not treating me as my sins deserve. I thank you, Lord, for loving me and my stupidity. I thank you, God, for coming and, and rescuing me and picking me up, Lord. And I just pray today, Lord, that your seed falls where you lay it at. Don't let me get ahead of you today, God. This is fresh ground. This is fresh manna. And I sure can't preach it without you. So, Lord, I don't need to preach it. Take this microphone. Hide me in the hollows of your hand. Have your way in this church. And somebody say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, tell somebody, I know a man. Oh, man. Hallelujah. I know a man that can. Yes. I want you to underline verse 5 in your Bible if you got a pen. And we're going to get started. It says, some seed. I want you to underline the some seed. And underline, fell on rocky ground. Jeremy, I want you to pull up a picture for me real quick. The Bible didn't say every seed will fall on this rocky ground and they won't make it. He said, Joseph, some seed. Jessica, he said, some seed will land on rocky ground and some won't make it. But that tells me that all of them are not in the same boat. He said some seed did in fact hit rocky ground. Have you ever been by a sidewalk and looked in the middle of a sidewalk, and if you've ever put one in, I have, and our job is when we put this sidewalk in April is I never want to see that little sprout pick up. Because I know later on I got to put weed killer out and I got to try to kill this grass. And then I think to myself, Bob, where in the world did this come from? I did everything I could to stop this grass from coming up in the middle of my sidewalk. Anybody know what I'm talking about in this church? And the Lord reminded me, we was up on a mountain of King Crowder's Mountain with my wife. Same mountain that I asked her to marry me. I took her up there 10 years later in and I began to see things different because I began to see out of the eyes of Jesus. And I began to look around and as, as you walk with God, the atmosphere changes. The world changes when you walk with God. The way you see things, your perspective changes when you start looking through the eyes of Jesus. And we get to the top of it and, and I told my wife a long time ago as we climbed this mountain and she had no idea I was going to ask her to marry me when we got to the top. And I would tell her, I said, life's a lot like this mountain. We're going to want to quit. We want to give up. There's going to be times that we want to turn back around. We don't want to reach to the top of this, to our full potential. But we cannot quit because my Bible says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. But we can get to the top of it. And even when we want to quit, even when we got to take a rest. And, but divorce is not an option. We have to pursue the Lord and he will carry us up. And this time, 10 years later... Anastasia, I get to the top of this mountain, and Donnie, the mountain looks different than I've ever seen it before. J uh, Pastor Brown, turn me to another picture. I want you to see something. Take me to one and zoom in and get past Lincoln. Go right there. That's good right there. Zoom in on that. You got that plus button on down at the bottom. Let me get my big head out your way. Go on down a little bit more. Can anybody go on down a little bit more? A little bit more. Uh, there you go. 
There it is. Can anybody see that tree? Bring the picture down a little bit, Jay. Now, how in the world does a seed fall on a rock and grow? I don't see no soil, Becky. The water's in front of it, all it needs, but can't reach it. And the Bible says some seed. I didn't tell you, Pastor Robbins. I didn't tell you, Pastor Brown. I didn't tell you, Jesse. I didn't tell you, Anastasia, that some seed would never make it. I said some seed will not make it. And I began to understand my whole life because I am the seed that landed on rocky soil. Somebody needs to hear me in this church. We wasn't supposed to make it. It was supposed to have been over a long time ago. But something God put in the soil was just enough to get us through. Somebody needs to hear me in this church. I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I wasn't given the 60 and the 80 fold or the 100 fold. I came somewhere on the other side of eight miles somewhere. I didn't come with everything that come with it. I didn't come with the, 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 the glitter and the big screens. and I, I didn't get all of that. But yet, here I am. Come on, somebody. But here we are. Do I got anybody in this church that can testify today that I was born on some rocky soil? Come on, somebody. Mm. It wasn't all of that in a box of chocolate. Come on, somebody, but we made it through by the grace of God. I wasn't born. I was born in a hard place. I was born in a rocky place, a place that I was born that most people would have gave up. Church, you know what I'm talking about. The place that you were born, most would have gave up and quit a long time ago. Stay with me. Most, kept, most of them didn't keep fighting. And their root system dried up. I told a story a long time ago about my granddaddy had, had been out on the back porch and he loved to watch birds. Long story short, he, he begins to see these caterpillars crawling. If you've heard this before, just hang in there. And he sees these caterpillars crawling. And Papa, being the man of God that he was, he always wanted to help everything. And he began to watch these caterpillars, Miss Debbie, one by one crawl out. And he noticed that they were coming out of a Cancun. And he says, the rest of them seem to be stuck. Well, Pastor Brown, I'm going to go and help them out. So he reaches down there and he picks up the tacoon or whatever you call it and he pulls it down and he begins, Jesse, to pull each and every caterpillar out one by one. Don't worry, I know what it's like to struggle. I know what it's like to be born in rocky places. I know what it's like to all hell come against you. But today, little caterpillar, I'm going to pull you out one by one. Somebody listen to me in this church. He began to take one by one caterpillar out of the middle of this cocoon. And as these caterpillars laid up on top of this picnic table, Papa waiting on to get up and crawl and go go do their thing, but he noticed that every one of the caterpillars that he pulled out of the cocoon began to shrivel up. Their legs begin to wither up, and their bodies begin to shrivel up. And the thing that Papa thought he was doing, he wanted to take the struggle away. He wanted to take the rocky road away. But instead, he noticed that when he took the struggle away, he took their life away. Somebody needs to hear me in this church. Many of you have been like caterpillars and you come out of the cocoon fighting from day one. We all wasn't born on the soil that produced 60 and 80 and 100 fold. Some of us were seeds that fell into some rocky soil, but something inside of us that said, greater is he that lives inside of me. You lying devil, I will not give up. I will pursue the Lord. I know I wasn't born with enough. I didn't have enough water. I didn't have enough soil, but what God give me is just enough to get me through. Somebody needs to hear me in this church. Look at your neighbor and tell him I came from the rocky soil. Woo! The rocky seeds were born on the other side of the tracks. The Bible says some seed fell on rocky soil. And some of them seeds, they didn't make it. They didn't have the root system. And they died because they, they didn't want to go through the struggle. They got tired of fighting. 
They got to where I had enough and, I, and I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'd rather lay down and die. But something God does in his children, we always don't look the same. That's a peculiar about God's people. You can put them on rocket ground and they still make it. Somebody needs to hear me. Woo! Do I got any rocky seeds in this house? Stay with me, church. We that some that made it. See, rocky seeds, they're often born on the other side of the tracks. The rocky seeds are often born with no mama, no daddies. The rocky seeds are often grew up in places where there was not, we was worried about the, the power staying on and y'all ain't hearing me. The rocky seeds often grew up not knowing where the next meal would come from. The rocky seeds grew up in places not knowing what we would drink tomorrow, more or less have of a choice what to drink in the refrigerator. I came to preach to somebody. The struggle is what made you. I know many times we ask God to take it away, but God ain't going to. Somebody stay with me, church. Rocky, Rocky Seeds grew up saying, God, I know you hear me, and I know you see me, but I need you to remove some of these rocks out of my way. But what we didn't realize, Caleb, was growing up on the rocky places, when they seen you walk by, they seen the Lord walk by. Somebody needs to hear me because they said, there ain't no way he got out of that. There ain't no way he made it. I know where it came from. I know what is up. Come on, somebody. The only God could do that inside of him. Do I got anybody in this church to come from some rocky soil? Mm. There's two major differences in the rocky seeds. The rocky seeds that make it and the rocky seeds that didn't. There's two major differences in them. Both seeds ask God, why don't you just fix it? I know you can. Wave your hand, speak the word, move the mountain. Both of them ask God, why don't you just fix it? Have you ever asked God, why don't you just fix it? Why don't you just fix me? Why don't you just touch her? Why don't you show up here? Why didn't you answer my prayer? Stay with me, church. Both seeds. Both seeds, Kevin, they both fell alone. And both seeds began to feel abandoned. Stay with me, church. We're going to get in this word. Both seeds had decided that I'm going to follow Jesus. Both seeds started reading their Bibles. Both seeds started praying. But when the rain did come. But when the rain did come, when the people didn't know what I'm talking about, when it rains, it pours. When the crisis came, when sickness came, the doctors were shaking their head at. When heartbreaks came, when divorce showed up, when sitting by myself and sitting alone, wondering, God, when you're going to show up? And nothing happened. Both seeds began to recite their favorite Bible verse. Both seeds began to read the word back to the word. Then both seeds started praying, God, this rocky ground that you picked for me, it really sucks. Why couldn't I have been born on the other side? Why did I have to struggle? Why did I have to fight? Why did I have to know where the meal came from? Why, Lord? And why don't you just show up here today? Why don't you meet with me the way you used to meet with Moses? I'm not against seeing an angel show up. I'm not against seeing a miracle. In fact, I'm waiting and believing. And both seeds begin to pray their heart out. They pray until their lips turn blue. Then both seeds start doing this. I know ain't none of y'all done this. 
both seeds start pleading with God. Both seeds start begging God. Both seeds begin to try to make a deal with God. Has anybody in this church tried to make a deal with God? I know I have. God, if you'll do this, I'll be at church every Sunday. I start doing this and start doing that. Come on, somebody. And they both found themselves disappointed. Disappointed because they both expected God to fix everything. And it seemed like he didn't. And it seems like he just got quiet and the crickets came on. We begin to ask God, where are you? Then somewhere in the midst, an enemy begin to whisper. Can I tell you that Jesus is not Santa Claus in the sky? It's in the middle of those times when both seeds begin to hear a whisper. Where is your Jesus now? Anybody know what I'm talking about? As I sit on that mountain and I begin to look around with my wife and there was this one tree particularly. And I had been there, seen this many times. And my wife looks at me and she said, the Lord's going to give you a sermon on top of this mountain. And then I look and I see this tree growing in the middle of rocks. And I looked at it, Becky, and I thought to myself, my God, there ain't even no dirt there. And God reminded me of this in Isaiah 53, 2, verse 53, 2 through 5. Jeremy, pull me up, boss. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and out and as the root out of dry ground. They are talking about Jesus here. I'm going to show you in a minute. And as the root out of dry ground, he has no form or commonness. Whatever, not my verse not like that. And when, he see, when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He said, this root come out of dry ground ground he don't look look like a majesty he don't look like a king God wanted somebody to hear me in this church you seeds that come out of rocky ground see every shoe that you ever put on your king has already put them on he came out of dry ground where they said there ain't even no water for the root to live. But somewhere out of the dry ground, the root come out that still came alive and said my cup will never run dry. I am the water you need. Somebody needs to hear me. He was despised and rejected by men. A man of sorrow. Has anybody ever been rejected? Has anybody been felt alone, felt abandoned, felt like there ain't no way I can grow here? You give them everything in a box of chocolate. You took me on the other side of eight miles and dropped me out and told me to make the best I could. Why couldn't I have been on the other side where everything was peaches and cream and ice cream? Why do I got to be born over here? Your king was born over there. Come on, somebody. The Lord's showing you right here, I was rejected, I had sorrows. And he says, uh, and, we, and, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. Has anybody ever been despised? Right. Somebody lied if you ain't said you have. Your wife despised you. She may not tell you that, but she's despised you. Come on, somebody. Go to the next one, Jay. Surely he was born Bore our griefs and carry our sorrow. Now do you see who they're talking about? This is Isaiah giving you the prophecy that a root was coming 
out of dry ground. It wasn't supposed to live. It wasn't supposed to survive. It didn't look peaches and creams and ice cream. It was born in a pig trough somewhere. As many of us came from the other side and we were born in some rocky places where it seemed like we couldn't get ahead, we couldn't get by, but somewhere that lived inside of us, greater is he that lived in us that said you won't stop now. My son didn't stop then and you won't stop now. You keep moving forward one foot in front of the other and don't you look back. Come on somebody. Say I'm that seed out of rocky ground. But the only difference was I had some holy dirt. Woo! Tell somebody I know a man. Yes Lord. Mm. He came out of dry ground. Can I tell you, you can put seed in dry ground and then it would never grow. But the Lord Jesus himself gave the word in Mark and he said, some seeds won't make no sense. Some seed fell on rocky ground and they didn't have the roots but there was some seed that had just enough dirt and something inside of them, Lynn, that said, there's more. And they kept stretching and they kept reaching and the roots began to get stronger just like them little caterpillars. When Papa pulled them out of that Cancun and they began to die one by one, God said, I didn't leave you here to die. I may have left you here to struggle, but greater is he that lives in you. When I'm done doing what I've done to you, you will stand in the front of a hurricane and tell every devil in hell, God stands with me. I won't be shaken. I won't be moved because God is with me. Come on, somebody. You're going to be facing some things, church. It's 2023 and there ain't much difference in 1993. Struggles come, pain comes, tears come, heart comes, but the same God that was then is the same God now. And the same God that lives inside of us will continue to carry us through. And when the devil whispers, you can't remember, you remind him, but I remember his name. And that's where you're in trouble, devil. Come on, somebody. Today you may be in this church and your marriage may be on rocky ground. A lot of times I see marriages get on rocky ground. And the first thing we want to do is quit. Let me tell you something right now. My wife and me, when we, I came from rocky ground. She may have come from a hundredfold. But this one was born over here. Well, all it knew was the struggle. And God put the opposites together. And then being hooked up and linked up, y'all don't want to hear this kind of preaching, but it's the truth. When you get, when you come from the good soil and you get matched up with the rocky soil seed, that seed that come from here is going to fill every rocky soil from here. They're going to lock in because the two become one. So today, if your marriage is on rocky soil, the Bible says this, that Jesus was the root out of dry ground. It was never supposed to survive. You should have been divorced from, she should have never married your sorry butt to begin with. If you really want to talk to me. But God blinded the eyes of that woman and let me get her. But God put something inside of me just like he did the caterpillars before he made it a beautiful butterfly. He said, it may be a struggle, it may be a fight, but I have something for you if you will keep continuing to fight, if you will keep continuing to press forward, if you will continue to look forward and not look back because what I have for you in the front of you is much better than what you came through. Somebody needs to hear me. Your marriage can make it, but the only difference in the seed that collapse and the seed that, that makes it it's one seed says, where are you at, God? I'm tired of looking. And they want to go to a, to a, a divorced attorney. Or they want to call somebody that's already been divorced. Y'all don't want to hear me. And start looking for the options. Now, I ain't telling you that everything you did was smart decisions. 
Because some of you should have never gotten married to a person you didn't ask God. God, you thought you might have heard, but you didn't. You could have been married to somebody God never designed for you to begin with anyway. And it was a fight struggle. It's like a woman being beat to death all the time, every day, like my mama was growing up. She wasn't supposed to grow up in that. God, she's a child of a king. She wasn't supposed to be a man to put hands on her every day. God said, the next decision that you make, you see where this one got you. If you'll let me lead the way, it may have been a struggle in the rocky ground. It may have been a fight. It may be pain. It may be hurt. But if you would just get a hold of the S-O-N, you've been trying to draw from the S-U-N. But if you would draw from the S-O-N, I will show you the way out. And all of a sudden, you see this little green head pop out of the middle of the rocks. I thought he killed your spirit a long time ago, woman. I thought he would make you give up by now. But there was good holy ground, so you hear me, my sister. There was something down there that God put that makes you refuse to quit. That reminds you, I married the King Jesus. In order for me and my wife to mate it 10 years, them roots had to fight through a bunch of rocks. Time of dry seasons when I wanted to quit. When I asked God, I know she's pretty, but I'm going to send her back. When God had to speak to a woman and say, I know he's hard-headed. And I know he don't look like he's got it all together because he don't. He don't even know how to tie his shoes or remember where he put them. But it's mine. And I know it looks rocky, honey. But I'm strengthening you in the test. I'm strengthening your roots. So when you pick your head up and that tree begins to flourish and you look back and say, my God, everything that tried to kill me, everything that tried to destroy me, look what God did. Maybe your kids are here today and maybe you got kids here today and some of them own some rocky soil. And we wonder why God don't just fix it. Why don't God just make that young man strong? Didn't you go through the rocky soil too? As the song said, a family tradition. In the church we call it generational curses. And if you don't know how to break these curses, your grandchildren will go through it too. But you need to understand something. Some of you are asking God to remove the rocks. And God placed your seed in the middle of them. You're asking God to move the rocks, the, 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 the boulders, and why can't I be born by the ocean? And you're praying that God makes your children's life peaches cream and ice cream. They don't go through no struggles. They don't go through no pain. What you're saying is I want to take my little baby, that caterpillar, and set him right up on top of this table and watch him shrivel up and die. Because God designed it different than the way we think. If God, know, he cares more for a, a dove or a bird, or then he, somebody hear me. But he cares much more for me. He knows the hair on my head. But he never said, I don't care about my animals. He didn't design the caterpillar just to come out the little. When you ever seen one in a, in a, in a cancun like this? You'll see them fighting and struggling. They look like they're wiggling. And y'all look and say, oh, they're wiggling. They ain't wiggling. They're fighting. Amen. They're trying to breathe. They're trying to get free. And God on the inside is working through a man of stage and saying, keep on moving your leg. Keep on moving your hand. Keep on moving. Put your hands to the sky and praise, son. Praise is your weapon. Stretch out your hands. Stretch out your feet. I'm strengthening you through this. So for the seeds that were born in rocky grounds and you've been praying God to remove the rocks, no, I'm not that church. 
He ain't going to remove them. He placed every stone, every rock, every pebble in your path. The Bible says a man makes his plans, but the Lord directs his steps. He was teaching you how to maneuver through this thing called life. Because somewhere in the Christian folks' minds, and we've all been there, especially those that were born on rocky soil, ones were born that was never supposed to make it, but God got us through it. Those, and the first thing we want to do is take all the pain away, Katie. We want to take everything, Skittles and rainbows and unicorn forts for this little baby. We don't want her to struggle. We want you to just have it straight to the top. But the worst thing God can do is let your children get straight to the top and not be prepared for the top. That's where overdose comes from. That's where suicide comes from. Because they get a gift they ain't ready for. That's why you got all these little spoiled brats around right now and don't know if they're girls or boys. Yes, I said it. They can't figure it out because everybody wants to take the struggle away. Everybody wants to take the pain away. But I just came by here before I get to heaven to remind you of a seed that was born on rocky ground. Come on, somebody. God always supplied every need. Every need he supplied. So instead of asking God to take the rocks away, say God's sending the rocks that he needs to be strengthened. Just give him the faith to carry on. Somebody needs to hear me. Remember the sermon we preached last week? God just has a way. He didn't tell Peter, I'm going to rebuke the devil. I'm going to send him back to hell. He didn't do none of those things. He said, Peter, Peter, the devil has asked for you. And he's asked to shift you as wheat. He didn't say, I stood there and told the devil, this one's mine. Uh, He ain't got no rocks on his road. It's straight ahead for him, baby. He said, I make crooked roads straight. What's that tell you? There was a crooked road there to begin with. I make the rough road smooth. Because God's children are peculiar people. He said, Peter, he wants to shift you as wheat. No worries. I prayed for you. I prayed. Let me just sum it up here shortly. I prayed that you would keep the faith. I didn't pray that it would be Skittles and rainbows. I didn't pray that every rock would move out of your path. I didn't didn't pray for you a, a sidewalk. No, son, there are boulders, there are mountains, there are devils and there are demons, and they sit in front of you. But where I have placed you in the middle of this rock, I have put just enough in you. He said he put a measure of faith in you. I gave you the measure of faith when you got to the first rock and said, my God, can't you just take it away? I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being depressed. I'm tired of being broke. I said, well, do something about it. Climb that mountain, boy. And as you climb that mountain and you begin to understand who you walk, see, when you walk this thing called life with God and them them seeds that come from rocky ground, they begin to walk. And my sister Randy, what happens on the walk of life, they start figuring something out. They have an identity in Christ. Then they start understanding, I don't got to climb that mountain. Y'all ain't hearing me. The Lord Jesus lives in me and he said and I'm able to speak to the mountain and let it move. Somebody hear me? But how it happens to the one that speaks to the mountain and they, they recite their favorite verse and the mountain remains the same. The difference in the seeds is one lays at the bottom of the mountain and God has to whisper down to some of his children. He did it to Moses. How long you going to sit down here at the bottom of this mountain? I'm not going to move it. I'm not going to wave my hand and it's going to disappear. The pain will be there. The struggle will be there. My son come out of dry ground. And he made it and he lives in you. Now I want you to put your mountain boots on, boy. And I want you to climb. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's time to climb. 
Woo! So if your marriage is on rocky grounds today, who gave you permission to throw the towel in? If your kids are on rocky ground, it seems like all they do is get high, they can't get people a job, they can't get right. Quit trying to make everything skittles and but come on. Quit. God got you through the struggle and he'll get them through it too. It's the struggle is what made them. The struggle is what makes you appreciate things. The struggle is what makes you turn around and look and say, my God, you were there then. What in the world is this mountain today? If God removed cancer then, he'll move it today. Somebody needs to hear me. You could have rocky ground at your job. Your job could just suck. And you hate the place. Is it feeding you? Instead of being so disrespectful and thinking that you don't need that, thank God to give you strength to have one. God said, before I give you more, he said, you got to appreciate the little things. Come on, somebody. When you walk with the Lord on rocky ground, you begin to understand that every ground I walk on is holy ground. And it no matter when the rain don't come, no matter when the sun hides its face, Jeremy, pull that picture up. No matter when I can't see the light of day, there's a word inside of me to speak something different. Make it large, Jeremy. I could have thrown a million seeds on the side of that rock and they would have run off of it. But some seeds, even if it's just one seed, God placed a tree in the middle of a rock to remind me and you this morning, you may have been born in some places that were real strange to you. You may have got some gift from God that was strangely wrapped. It may have been a struggle from the get-go. It may have been peaches and ice cream and then thrown out into the wilderness like Moses. He didn't remember floating down a river. Grew up in the palace. It's one thing when I grow up with nothing, I can appreciate everything. I can't tell you this, but I can only imagine. Can you imagine having everything and losing everything? If the root system ain't right, it'll lay down and die. But I stop by here before I go to heaven, before I close you out. There's one seed that goes crazy when it lands on rocky soil. It goes crazy. It can't figure it out. It be filled with anxiety, worries, pressures. Spirits move in called depression. Voices move in called the devil himself or his demons that come in to whisper, where is your God now? And in the middle of those seeds, there's two seeds now. That one seed's going crazy trying to figure out how to fix it, how to get out of it. It don't care about the struggle. It don't care about the pain. It just wants out of this cocoon. I'm tired of fighting. Remove it, Jesus. And its root system is not growing. And somewhere in it, he hears a voice. Where is Jesus now? Those seeds are the seeds that don't have enough root system and they die. But them peculiar seeds that land on rocks like this, I see a church full of them. They landed in places that made no sense and they didn't even understand the measure of faith that God had put in them they didn't understand what God was doing all they could see was mountains and boulders depression, hurt, pain they couldn't understand where is he but something was in them that says I refuse to die 
something was in them that says, my children won't go through the hell that I've been through. Something in them says, I got to keep pressing forward. The difference in the seeds is one is drowned out by the noise of the world. It is drowned out by the enemy himself whispering about the rocks and the mountains, but that peculiar seed. It hears a whisper. It wasn't in the wind and the rain, Jeremy. It wasn't in the lightning. Hoff, it wasn't in the stars lit up. It was in a small whisper. Joseph, keep going. Andrea, don't stop now. April, I know the car is laying on top of you. Just get out from under it. Charlie, I know you want to quit, but I need you to trust me. It's whispers. He begins to whisper. It's the whisper that says, my God's a restorer. It's a whisper that says, I don't live that way no more. It's a whisper that says, I should have died a long time ago. It's the whisper that says, I am for you. It's a whisper that says, it ain't him you get your peace in. It's a whisper in a child of God that says, I can't quit now. And he often says this in the middle of the rocks. You ever got to one and all you can do, Carly, is look and say, how in the hell can I get past it? Where are you at, Jesus? Why don't you take the cancer away? Why don't you heal? Why? It's in that moment you need to shut your mouth. My grandma taught me this a long time ago. She said, in the middle of those moments, shut up. She said, he's a small, still voice. And he'll whisper something like this. Be still. And know I'm God. Be still. And know I'm a mountain mover. Be still and know I raised the dead. Be still and know cancer has nothing on your God. Be still and know I'm no respecter of person. Be still and know that I got them children in my hand. Be still and know that divorce ain't an option today. Somebody needs to hear me in this church. I know you may have been going through some stuff in this church, but God ain't finished. I dare you to be still. I dare you to quit looking at the mountain and letting it whisper, where is your God? You look at the mountain and say, my God made you mountain. Don't get it twisted. He made you mountain. He made you so I can look at you one day and say, God is about to remove you. Woo! Somebody make some noise for Jesus in this church. You know, I'm posted as a preacher, I'm posted to have this little protocol I give y'all. I'm going to play some music and it'll be real soft and slow when I pull on your heartstrings. And y'all don't got that preacher. I just let the spirit lead me. What God is looking for is them rocky seeds that have been struggling today. Them rocky seeds that's got to some mountains and don't understand why he hadn't moved them. Do you know where your strength come from? Never let those knees get lazy. I'm going to just do something as a body. I would tell this side, that side to come to this side, but Miss Debbie is over there, so they outvote y'all. <laughs> so I'm going to ask y'all if you would stand to your feet. I'm going to ask this side, do you stand to your feet? Could we just move in to each other and just put your hand on everybody's shoulder right here because there are people facing things in this church right now, and you don't want to talk about it. 
The devil keeps whispering to you to put it up under a rug. He keeps whispering to you, where is your God now? He keeps whispering to you, this is the life that God has for you. Can you see the caterpillar? God, why, did you, why didn't you design me to be a bear? At least I come out strong. But you made me a little caterpillar that I had to fight from day one. He said it was in the struggle, it was in the pain, it was in the hurt. That's where I'm going to create my beautiful butterfly at. God says this in his word, and I'm going to close with prayer. You hear me, seeds in rocky soil. He said, I make everything right. I make everything. Who knows it? Who knows the word? Come on. Beautiful in his time. Messy as it looks. Ugly as it seems sometimes. If you would trust him. Like the root system. Me, you know how many times me and my wife wanted to get divorced? You know how many times I had to get in the car, Charlie, and ride away? How many counselors I've been to, and I knew he was going to tell her it was all her fault and it was all mine? But something in me whispered, somebody's got to break this curse. Somebody's got to break it. And the hell that I allowed you to go through is what made you. It's what strengthened you. You wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for him. Every hand lifted and one hand on the shoulder. Let's take a moment of silence. I want you to pray for your neighbor because you don't know what they're going through. I had Miss Puckett in a service one day and the doctor had told her cancer. And the devil had whispered so loud that it shut her mouth. But inside of her was a whisper. And God whispered to a man of God off on the other side of town. Go to that little church where that crazy preacher is. There's a woman that needs to talk to you. Because it's in the middle of those rock cliffs where we feel alone and abandoned. But my Bible says he works all things, even the rocks, even the mountains, for your good. Father, we lift our hands to heaven. We ask you, Lord Jesus, right now to continue to strengthen us. Remind us, God, of the rocks that we see ain't all it is. Remind us of that tree growing out of the middle of that mountain. Remind us, God, you're just building a root system. Remind them of a sweet, small, still voice that says, I'll never leave you. And I will never forsake you. I went before you. And that's why you're not filling me. But I'm removing the big rocks. So you could climb them. Father God, I thank you, Lord, right now for the praying mothers that's in here right now. Thank you, Lord, for the praying fathers that's in here right now. Lord, I lift up any kids that are on some rocky ground right now that just want to give up. I pray for the child that's landing on rocky ground and it tries to stay numb. I pray for the marriages today that's on some rocky ground. You remind them you're just building the root system. So in 10 years from now, you will look back and you will be up on top of that mountain growing beautiful. And you will look down and say, you know what? If we would have quit, we wouldn't see the view today. God, I pray, Lord, that you strengthen every one of them. Put your hands on them, God, no matter what we're facing. We all face different things. But let them hear your whisper. Let them hear your whisper. One more step. Keep the faith, church. God. 
is with us. Lord, I love you. I praise you, God, and I thank you, God, for that you allowed me to be born on rocky ground. I would have never appreciated all the blessings you give me. I would not never be as thankful as I am today. I thank you for each and every boulder, every mountain. You sure know what you're doing. Lord, we trust you. Teach us to trust you more. Teach us just to hold your hand and let you walk forward. Strengthen the root system here today, Lord. We trust you. We believe that you are on our side. We believe that you are for us and not against us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. In the name of the Jesus, the church said, Amen. 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 Jeremy, you go ahead, brother. Yes, ma'am. praying more for Miss Debbie. I saw two hands. I saw Miss Debbie kneeling down with her head down. 